Tlingit, Haida, and Simpsian people occupy the lands and waters of southeast Alaska. They rely on the rivers and ocean for much of their resources and food. While salmon are historically the most important fish, halibut are also critical for food and trade. Thomas George is a Tlingit fisherman who still carves his own traditional wood halibut hooks called nach. His grandson, Thomas Barlow, has embraced the traditional culture and regularly fishes with his grandfather. Once their boat has left the harbor, the first task is locating the halibut holes. They head for a productive location that Thomas Sr. first learned about from his father. When they have reached their location, preparation of the fishing gear begins. Halibut, along with most fish living in the waters of southeast Alaska, love herring. It's the best bait the octopus will work as well. The traditional hook is a perfect size to bait with herring. Thomas has learned from his grandfather how to bait the wooden hook. The bait's nice and wrapped, tight and firm so that um, the small little fishes can come and nibble it off, you know, they will, they will come. And that's when the halibut gets interested in what's going on over there, you know. Thomas's handmade hooks are used with a set of gear including small rocks that serve as anchors and large carved floats known as tattletales. Young Thomas explains how the gear is organized. This is the ground line, and this is the rock that I tied up short, a little while ago. You put a bigger rock on the bottom, like this. Then you come a little ways, and you should have a ganyan. You grab one hook, and you tie it on. You should have another ganyan. And another ganyan spliced into a swivel with your buoy line. The ganyan is the buoy line. Take this top one and you grab another hook. Farther, you got another ganyan. You put a small, smaller rock. We put the big rock on the bottom, smaller rock on the top. Shortly after, we'll go set this one, and then we get a tattletale buoy, and we put it. We give it about two, three fathoms of extra line, especially when it's windy like this, because it has a little bit of waves and it wants to have the buoy moving. You don't want the buoy moving like this or else you'll think that your, the halibut were on and you waste all your energy pulling it all the way up and you won't have one on. And when you get one on, hopefully we see it, you will see the tattletale will go like this because the halibut will pull onto this ganyan that is tied to this ganyan which will pull and it will cause it to go like this. And sometimes they'll go under. Give it some slack. Grab a tattletail buoy. And tie it on. Let's 
some slack out. Then you grab safety buoy. And you put it on. Okay. That's how it's done. Several sets of hooks are released at spots that Thomas George has learned from his father. They carefully watch the tattletales for any sign that a halibut has taken the hook. Thomas Jr. and Sr. begin pulling up the gear to see if they've had any success. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. One wire. Thomas George stuns the halibut by hitting it with a carved wooden club. And his nook has landed another halibut. The design of the wooden hook helps preserve the halibut fishery. Small halibut cannot get the hook in their mouth. Very large halibut, which tend to be females carrying millions of eggs, can spit the hook out with little trouble. The hook is designed to catch mid-size halibut, 30 to 60 pounds. The wooden halibut hook is an exceptional device with roots that go back hundreds if not thousands of years. Stories describing the origins of the hook have been passed down for many generations. Thomas George and his grandson, Thomas Barlow, are successfully maintaining this ancient clinket fishing method as a living tradition. <laughs>